Welcome back. Welcome back. It has been far too long. Guys, I'm just getting through the tail end of the busy season at work. And, you know, hopefully it's not like it was last year where I didn't have work for a couple of weeks, except for on the weekends. And I think because of the virus, you know, all that stuff's pretty much behind us. But I need the money. I just got my car out of the shop and then something happened. My car broke down last night. I had like a wheel bearing, like the wheel like straight locked up. I had to call the tow truck, tow it to the neighborhood shop. Hopefully they can get to it tomorrow, you know, life stuff, but, but I'm good. Had a good Christmas and, you know, holiday season overall, other than the fact that I was working like 80 hours a week. I hope you, I hope you guys had a great Christmas and, uh, you know, holiday season, you know, we're at the tail end of 2020, moving into 2021. And I'll tell you something funny that happened. My dog got his two front paws stuck in one of those mice glue traps. You know what I'm talking about? Those glue traps for mice. Like we have mice in the wintertime out here, so we use glue traps, but a glue trap caught a dog, so it's a Boston Terrier, so those things, they work. I mean, they, they caught a dog. Anyway, we have the unboxing. This is the first thing I've got from PlayAsia in quite some time, but this is a Soldner X2 Final Prototype, which I guess is the definitive version of the scheme. It initially released on the PlayStation Vita, and there was a previous game in the series. It was called like a Soldner X, like Hummersmittel or something like that. It's like some German word. It's got like the dots above the U and the O. I mean, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. But I remember being very impressed with that game. It's for the PC. There's actually a physical on that game on the PC and the PS3. Not sure about the 360, but maybe it's on there. But downloaded it on the PS3. Loved it. Um, look, this game even came with a shirt or it was an add-on. It was only a couple of dollars. Though. It was like less than five bucks for the shirt. Size extra large. I uh, haven't opened it at this point, so I don't know what the sizing is like. It says S on there, but it is size extra large. Um, and here we have the uh, Soldner X2 final prototype for the PlayStation 4 from PlayAsia. Um, you know, I really enjoy the PlayAsia or East Asia Soft Collectors Editions because it gives you just everything you need. You have the game and you have the soundtrack. And those are the two main biggest components in a collector's edition, it, at least for me. I can take the CD, rip it to my Windows Media Player, use it in YouTube videos, and upload it to my phone, bang on it when I'm driving, all that. Or I could just take the CD and jam in my car with the CD player. Cars, at least mine, my 2016 still has a, a CD player. But uh, yeah, everything you need. Yeah, you know, I, I think about games like Ikaruga. They just released that so-called collector's edition of Ikaruga. Didn't come with the soundtrack, even though the advertisement touted how great the soundtrack or the OST is in that game. No soundtrack. I feel like they, they gave you that weird metal construction kit where you can actually build the ship but i would have much rather preferred the soundtrack the ost a physical of that but i mean i guess i'm grateful we got a physical of that game even though i'm not the biggest treasure shooter fan i mean ikaruga is iconic it is pretty cool um glad to see a port outside of the dreamcast and gamecube right um anyway here's the uh the card right here the soldner x2 collector's card the numbered card this is 798 out of i guess there was a couple thousand of these things made and if you've ever bought a east asia soft collector's edition you know the everything's the same the way the cardboard folds up and holds the soundtrack and the game and the art card all that stuff's the same so uh you pretty much know what to expect i just wanted to share this with you guys there is a poster in here though looks like it's just a poster of the solar system or universe or whatever but uh yeah, uh, I'm trying to think of what else I can show you guys for this video. I have been finding some cool stuff here and there at the flea market. Haven't really been buying a lot of games just because I've been busy. But I have been going after a lot of Game Boy stuff. You know, maybe I'll show you some of the stuff I got for the Game Boy. And uh, I've got some pretty cool anime DVDs. I've been really going after anime pretty heavy. Just see, especially like that 90s stuff. You know, I'm really into that 90s, like hardcore anime. But uh, yeah, this is Soldner X2 final prototype the ps4 version although i don't think this was released anywhere else um you know let me guys let me know in the comments did this come out on steam i'm assuming this would probably be out on steam um but i you know any other systems as far as like switch or you know xbox i'm not sure if it's available digital on any of those systems but it does feel like there's actually a manual in here and you get that a lot with the east asia soft releases but let's just say a run-of-the-mill game that you get at like a GameStop. You know, you'd be you'd be damn pressed to get a, a, a warranty card in a game, right? You don't see anything inside those cases. So to see a full-color manual in a game in you know 2020, 2021, you know, that's pretty uh, you know, 
average in the 80s and 90s, right? But it's pretty damn impressive in you know, 20 and 2021. So, and it, like I said, it's full color. Um, you know, I, I really like seeing stuff like this, you know, because they don't have to do this. And even if they add the manual digitally on the disc or cart, I'm cool with that. But like that QR code thing where you got to scan it with your phone, man, come on. You know, I'm not down with that. But anyway, this is the Soldner X2 Final Prototype Collector's Edition from East Asia Soft and Play Asia. So I haven't played this game a ton at this point, but I did want to share a little bit of gameplay footage. That way you can at least see what the game looks like. And, you know, so far, first impressions is it's pretty much what I thought it was going to be. Pretty much plays like a game in the Thunder Force series, the way everything scrolls, except for the backgrounds, uh, the way you can cycle through your weapons. Uh, there's another game that came out on Steam and Android, I believe, as odd as that is. It's called, like, Vitira or Vitera. It's uh, pretty much the same thing, only it's... Uh, using dragons so it's like dragon spirit and thunder force combined i actually highly recommend that game if you guys want to check it out but real quick this is something that's like clicking in my brain and i don't know why but there's this this shooter on the atari Lynx. it's like this uh it's got a euro vibe with the music or the, like the name like the title and everything ah, do any of you guys know what i'm talking about is that the same group that made these games is there, are they connected in any way you know please let me know in the comments um, if you even know what that Atari Lynx game is, let me know. It's like some, um, you know, third-party shooter that came out well after the Life of the Lynx. Um, I don't know why. Maybe it's just the title. I know it's like a German word. But are there, is there any connection there? You know, please, you know, let me know in the comments. But what do you guys think? You know, I dig the soundtrack to this game, the sound effects. It's, it's got a Euro vibe just the way, like, Tarek and has, like, a Euro vibe. Um, you know, I'm digging it, even though I haven't played it a ton at this point. You know, still, the game is, uh, it's weird how you have the rings in there. That kind of reminds me of Sonic, right? But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to quickly share some gameplay footage with you guys. And I don't know what else I'm going to show you in this video. But, uh, yeah, maybe my Game Boy collection. I don't know. We'll see. All right, so I said Game Boy. I'm going to show you. These are all the Game Boy games that I found recently at my local flea market. Uh, Sunsoft's Batman. Now, there's another Batman game, at least at least one other one that I know of on the Game Boy uh, this one's actually really cool, and I actually had this as a kid, or I had a friend that had it as a kid, and I played it that way. But anyway, Sunsoft's Batman on the Game Boy. And this is actually a Game Boy Color game, so obviously I'll play this on the Game Boy Advance, but Mega Man Extreme 2. And um, this didn't really seem like the greatest Mega Man game, but it still it was okay from what I've played of it. I haven't really played a ton of this game at this point, but I do like the cover there, at least the front of the cart, the sticker on the cart. Uh, Super Chase HQ, this is only like a $10 game, but I've never seen this Game Boy game ever. And it, I saw the Taito logo, and I was like, yeah, I'll try it out. Like, again, it was $10. Bucks, so, um, this one I found recently. Okay, this is interesting. This is R-Type DX, and this is like R-Type, R-Type 2 for the Game Boy. And then it's got Game Boy Color games on here. So then you have like R-Type and R-Type 2 on the Game Boy Color. And then there's R-Type DX, I guess, that mixes the two. So you can actually play this on a Super Game Boy using your Super Nintendo. But unless you have a Super Game Boy 2, you're not going to be able to play the colored versions of these games. But uh, still pretty cool. And the black and white versions actually play a little bit better. But I, I never run across this. And it's like a $10 game, but R-Type DX. And lastly, we have Mega Man 2. Now, this is described as the worst Mega Man game on the Game Boy. At least that's what I've heard other people say. But um, it is a little bit easier, so that's that's a that's a good thing. But um, yeah, Mega Man 2. I, there was a Mega Man 1 I could have gotten. Someone bought it, so wish I had that one too. But I'll run across it again someday, maybe. But I, I very rarely ever see these Mega Man games on the Game Boy. And uh, here we got some anime. So some of this stuff's really good. I've really been digging this anime lately. But uh, here we have Miami Guns. Now, this series got terrible reviews online, but don't listen to any of that. I think this series is awesome. Um, not that many episodes, but if you like anime like Gunsmith Catch, you should really check this out. Um, there's actually one episode on this disc that doesn't play right. There's a scratch on the disc, so I guess I'll have to... This is the complete collection, so they do have... There's like four discs that it originally came out on. The one that's scratched up is on this CD on the third release, so and I can find that on eBay for like seven dollars. So maybe I'll I'll buy that standalone. That way I have all the episodes. It, it, it is a damn shame there's that scratch on the disc, but um, this was cheap. But this is not easy to find. I've I've, it's, I've only seen a couple of these ever go up for sale, but they're not super expensive. But anyway, that's Miami Guns, the complete series or the perfect collection is what it's called. All right. 
Next up, we have Sands of Destruction. Now, this is one of my all-time favorite RPGs on the Nintendo DS outside of Super Robot Ties and OG Saga Endless Frontier. Um, the, the, again, this is a game that didn't get the best reviews, but uh, man, I knew there was an anime about the DS game. I actually have this one. It's in my PS4 right now. I'm watching it, but this is the Save or the Super Amazing Value Edition, you can see there, um, which is, isn't a bad thing. They're usually the best versions of these animes that you can get, at least that I've seen, but this wasn't that expensive. Like all these animes were like a couple of dollars a piece at the flea market, but um, I've seen this for sale online. It's not super expensive, but it's something I just never run across, and I, I, I started watching the first disc, and I like it, but anyway, Sands of Destruction, based on one of my favorite Nintendo DS RPGs. Now... These Armitage movies, okay, I think these are great animes, even though, again, they didn't get the greatest reviews online. Now, this is actually still sealed. I haven't watched this or even opened it yet, but look look at that. Juliette Lewis as Armitage. Where do I know her from? She's like some famous actress. I'm sure you guys can comment down below and let me know all about her. But I have seen this well, this one right here. I watched this, Armitage 3, The Polymatrix. Um, awesome anime. The voice acting is like over the top. Um, from what I understand, Pioneer actually produced these movies, and they, they got all their own voice actors and everything. Um, I, I, these aren't expensive at all. You can buy these cheap. You can buy these cheap online. This is a good 90s. All this is like 90s-style anime. But I'm I'm really digging Armitage 3 Polymatrix. So hopefully this one's pretty good. You know, I don't know. It sucks it's sealed, and it makes me not want to open it. But, um, yeah, these are like, like a dollar a piece at the flea market. But... I, I do recommend this one anyway, Armitage 3 Polymatrix. And there's like a set that you can get. Actually, they have it at the flea market of all places, right? That it's both movies on two discs in one package. So I would recommend that. But maybe I'll buy that too if I'm like a real big fan of the first movie. Just so I have different variants of the same movie. But yeah, Armitage and Armitage. The two Armitage movies, even though this one's called Armitage 3. I don't even think there's a third. But Armitage 3 Polymatrix. And this last one, Kite. Um, even though that cover looks kind of weird, like a schoolgirl, like this is a pretty badass and anime. Like this is the most hardcore anime of like everything that you see in front of you. Um, yeah, it starts off and there's like a, a scene where a child molester is trying to take a kid up into an apartment, and the kid ends up shooting the child molester. And it's uh, it's like a she's like a cop that uh, takes out the bad guys, I guess, at least from what I've seen so far. But um, yeah, a guy at the flea market told me a little bit about this. That's what made me pick it up. So. Uh, kite you know all three of these or all four of these i should say are pretty pretty or all five of these there's five of them i just looked at they are all five of them are well I, I can only speak for four because i have not seen this armitage movie but this one's awesome i have all the stuff here miami guns and armitage three polymatrix i recommend the most but uh yeah, that's my uh, that's my treasure that i found at the flea market i guess i found this stuff maybe over the last i don't know two or three weeks but Anyways, till next time, guys. Peace.